Welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're doing something a little different. We're not just going to learn about the limitations of the Human Development Index. We're going to learn exactly how to craft the perfect exam answer on it. You've probably seen a question just like this one on an economics exam, right? It looks pretty straightforward, but getting all 10 of those marks? <laughs> well, that takes a certain touch. So let's break down how to get every single point. All right, so here's our game plan. We'll start with a basic concept, connect it to the core principles, look at a perfect model answer, and then I'll give you a guide to writing your own. We'll even peek behind the curtain at how it's graded and what you can do to take your studies even further. Let's jump in. Okay, first things first. Before you can tear something apart, you've got to know how it's put together, right? So let's make sure we are rock solid on the fundamentals. What is the Human Development Index anyway? So the HDI comes from the United Nations Development Program, the UNDP. And you know, the whole reason they created it was to say, hey, a country's success is about more than just money. They wanted to move past just looking at GDP and get a more, well, a more human picture of progress. And this is the really crucial part. It's built on these three big pillars. First up, a long and healthy life. They measure that with life expectancy. Simple enough. Second, knowledge, which is basically about education, how many years of schooling people get. And third, a decent standard of living, which they measure using gross national income, or GNI, per person. They take all three of these, mash them together, and poof, you get one single number that's supposed to capture the whole shebang. But, and this is a big but, and it's the entire point of our exam question, the index is far from perfect. This is the stuff you need to have in your answer. For starters, it's just an average, which means it can totally hide huge gaps between the rich and poor. It also leaves out a ton of important stuff, like, you know, human rights or how healthy the environment is. Then there's the fact that they just decided each part is worth a third. That's a choice, not a science. And finally, all of this depends on data that can be, well, let's just say a bit shaky, especially when you're looking at developing countries. Okay, now here's a pro tip for getting those top marks. You can't just spit out a list of facts you memorized. The best answers connect what you're talking about back to the big ideas, back to your textbooks. It shows the examiner you're not just a robot. You actually understand how these concepts fit together. So if you've got a textbook like MenQ's Principles of Economics, you'll want to flip to the chapters on measuring well-being. That's where he gets into this whole debate about whether GDP is really the best measure of a good life. Mentioning that context, that's what separates a good answer from a great one. It shows you're connecting the dots. All right, theory time is over. Let's see what this looks like in practice. We're going to take a high-scoring answer and break it down piece by piece to see exactly why it works so well. So check out how this answer kicks off. No fluff, it starts with a super clear, confident definition of HDI. Right away, you're telling the examiner, yep, I know my stuff. But then bam, it immediately pivots to what the question is actually about, the limitations. It's so direct and efficient. And this right here is why structure is your best friend in an exam. The answer lays out the limitations in four clean numbered points. It's just easy for the examiner to read and give you marks. But look closer. See how it goes one step further? It doesn't just say it ignores inequality. It actually mentions the solution, the inequality adjusted HDI or IHDI. Now that is showing off your knowledge in the best way possible. Okay, so that's the gold standard. But how do you actually do that when the clock is ticking and the pressure is on? Don't worry, I've got you. Here is a simple repeatable blueprint you can use to build your own perfect answer. Just think of it as a four-step recipe. Step one, define your term, nice and clear. Step two, structure your points. Use numbers, use bullet points, whatever makes it easy to follow. Step three, give a little bit of explanation or an example for each point. Don't just list them. And step four, this is the kicker, elevate your conclusion by mentioning how those problems could be fixed, like bringing up the IHD. You follow that, you get that logical flow and critical depth that examiners are just dying to see. All right, to really win the game, you've got to get inside the head of the referee, right? You need to think like the person who's grading your paper. So let's pull back the curtain and look at a likely grading rubric for a 10-mark question like this. Now, this is fascinating. Look at how the points break down. Yeah, knowing your stuff, conceptual clarity gets you a solid four marks. Having a good structure gets you another three. But check out that last one, critical insight. That's worth three whole marks. That's where you get points for mentioning things like the IHDI or questioning the arbitrary weighting. It means almost a third of your grade comes from thinking, not just from memorizing. 
You know, a truly great student doesn't just stop when they have the answer for the test. They get curious. Once you've got this exam question locked down, it's time to have some fun and see where this knowledge can take you next. The UNDP didn't just stop with the HDI, you know. They came up with other tools to fix its weaknesses, like the IHDI we mentioned, the Gender Development Index, and more. It's really cool to check those out. But if you really want to understand the heart and soul of the HDI, you've got to look up Amartya Sen's capability approach. It's this beautiful idea that development is really about giving people the freedom and the ability to live the life they want to live. It's so much bigger than just money. So I'll leave you with this final thought. What do you think is missing? If they handed you the keys and said, okay, redesign the HDI, what's the one thing you would add? Would it be something about the environment? Or maybe political freedom? What about happiness or mental well-being? Thinking about that, that is what takes your understanding from just being good enough for an exam to being truly great.